You were 70 when you were diagnosed with yeah, colon 69, cancer, 69. Actually. The doctor I went to sent me to the Cleveland Clinic for a proper diagnosis. And they said that this uh, tumor that they saw had metastasized, which means it had taken root in different parts of my body. If you're not operated on, you have three months to live. Mm. And uh, I went cold turkey on what is now known as a vegan diet. I knew I had to be operated for the basic tumor. After the operation, he looked in 35 places for metastasis and found none. So what I had done by simply changing diet was to kill the metastases that would possibly have killed me. There's nothing good about a vegan diet for cancer. In fact, the main dietary agents causing cancer are all vegan. Highly processed veg oils, sugar, bread, these are all tightly linked to cancer. So on the face of it, fighting cancer with a vegan diet is rather ridiculous. In fact, my great grandma lived to be 102 and she never had to change her diet because she never had cancer and she was never sick till the day she died. She was born in the 1870s and lived her whole life on a farm in Kansas. She ate eggs and bacon daily, and her favorite meal was fried chicken. Now today, fried chicken is largely poisonous because it's fried in carcinogenic veg oil, but she always fried it in healthy fat, lard from organically raised pigs on the family farm. So of course, if you go vegan and also avoid the main dietary offenders of veg oil, sugar, and bread, then you also have a slightly better result with cancer but you'll still have a rather high carb diet which has its own issues. The Warburg effect was discovered in 1936 by Otto Warburg, one of the most prominent physicians of his time. He received the Nobel Prize for Medicine for this discovery. The Warburg effect is the immense level of glycolization is conducted inside cancer cells, also known as carb burning metabolism. Most metabolism in the body is actually fat-burning metabolism, also known as oxidative phosphorylation, which produces far fewer toxic byproducts to the body, but requires oxygen. The reason this effect is important is that when cancer cells switch to oxidative phosphorylation, this usually kills them immediately. Cancer cells have hundreds or even thousands of times as much iron and other nutrients within them, which they can use to rapidly multiply. When oxygen metabolism is triggered in these cells, the iron forms compounds which either trigger apoptosis or simply destroy the cell completely from the inside out. While therapies like ozone therapy and hyperbaric oxygen chambers can in theory help this along, there's also many things you can do at home to help. Fasting is the biggest one, but a low carb diet also helps switch the body over to oxidative phosphorylation, and so does phototherapy with red light and near infrared. Personally, I'd rather avoid the big C completely if I can, but I'm happy to know if it ever does rear up its ugly head that at least there's some tools out there that can be put to use immediately. Though I would likely also get surgery if necessary. Just remember you typically have to wait weeks or even months to get a diagnosis or surgery. In fact, my neighbor was forced to wait over a year for surgery due to the current healthcare disaster. yourself in danger when you're threatened by a stranger when it looks like you will take a licking <laughs> there is someone waiting who will hurry up and rescue you just call for super chicken <laughs> 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 